So some of the Chicago police news this week was a police officer was found to have ties to the far right group, the Proud Boys, but the department chose not to fire him. Uh, Paris, how are members of the city council reacting? Not happy at all, especially the progressive members, you know, worried that someone who is sympathetic to the Proud Boys, which has been designated, uh, I think, by the Southern Poverty Law Center and the ADL as a hate group, Mm -hmm. anti-Semitic, racist, Uh, homophobic, all those things. It's very curious because the police department defended just suspending this officer, saying they don't have much evidence that these allegations are true, that he has these ties. But the inspector general said, well, you better go back and investigate again, because we're pretty clear in our own investigation. He lied about uh, talking to the FBI about Mm -hmm. ties to the Proud Boys. uh, And there is a preponderance uh, of evidence I don't know what the gap is here. I don't know why the police department's own internal investigation differs so much from the inspector general's investigation. But if you listen to David Brown, the superintendent, they say it's, yeah, this officer, uh, they were only going to suspend him like five days. He said, suspend me 120 days. I know this looks bad, you know. So they're kind of making him out to be a good guy that was caught up in in a misunderstanding. The inspector general's pretty clear that the this is troubling and needs to be looked at further. Yeah, Kim, what do you make of this? It's just a 120-day suspension. Well, because the information that's coming from both sides and and both sides being on the same side, which is so confusing and frustrating Mm -hmm. um, because they're saying we do have evidence, but the superintendent says we don't have evidence. We don't even know who the person is. So, People are we're serving with this person. We don't even know who they are. We know that he he or she, I don't even know if it's a male. I mean, they are suspended. Um, and it's troubling because we're talking about a police department that is literally under investigation for not just use of, of excessive force issues, but raci- racist practice issues mm-hmm. and with a consent decree that has been in place for several years now that we never meet any of the benchmarks on time. We just fired the guy who was actually overseeing the whole process. How do you trust the police department? How do you get the average citizen in the city of Chicago to trust the police department when they see things like this? And, and this is one of the, like Paris just said, Southern Poverty Law Group. FBI, everyone has labeled this organization anti-Semitic and also, of course, just a white supremacist group. Yeah. Dave, do you want to weigh in on this? Well, I mean, it just seems like it's one of those things where if if that if those relationships exist like that, I mean, do, do you want to be the person who has a, a problem and, and come face to face with an, an individual like this? Right. Like, I think that's a legitimate question that, that the police department has to answer. Um, and, and, you know, none of us are, are real comfortable with what happened on January 6th and, and the role that the, the, that group played there. So, I mean, it's, it's, these are all legitimate questions. And the, can, the, the council, I think, is, is uh, you know, they're not going to let this go. And so also, also curious why the mayor is, you know, he's ba- she's basically backing her police superintendent. Yeah. Saying, you know, it's. She said it was about accountability. It was about accountability. And, you know, and the mayor who who said, like, don't think as a, as a black woman and a lesbian, I'm not going to uh, stand for any kind of nonsense. So it is curious why she's not joining the chorus to get more answers here, maybe because politically, um, you know, she, she just doesn't want to be seen going against her police superintendent as this election gears up.